Hello, and thank you for listening to Wolverine Radio. I'm Ty Yeager, and today I have a special guest, Dan O'Malley of the Russ Martin Show on 97.1 The Eagle. Thank you, Dan, for the time to do this interview with me. Hey, it's my pleasure. All right, so, Dan, you're the news director of one of the top radio talk shows in Dallas, the Russ Martin Show. How did you get involved with radio and decide to go into radio as a career? Well, let's see. When I first decided I wanted to get into broadcasting, it was when... I was, I'd say, a teenager, and I was always a big fan of sports, and I started out wanting to be a sports commentator. And that shifted a while. Uh, actually, I was in high school, and I was a senior, and a guy by the name of Russ Martin was doing mornings on 97.1 The Eagle. And he was doing a live remote from a jack-in-the-box down the street from my high school. I went to Lamar in Arlington. And I decided to go by the remote before school to see what they were doing. And I get there, and outside the Jack in the Box, I see Russ Martin. He's doing a live break on the radio, and there's a line of cars around the corner. Anyway, while he's doing this live break, he's eating two 99-cent tacos. And your teacher will be mad at me for telling you this, but I was in high school at the same time, so all's fair. He was drinking a 16-ounce Budweiser Tallboy. Keep in mind, this is at like 7.15 in the morning. That was when I decided... I want to do that. Become Russ Martin? Not become him. <laughs> do what he does. But kind of do what he does because at that point I decided instead of just focusing only on sports, I like the idea of being able to go into a studio and entertain and not be limited to any one topic or thing. I like the idea of being able to just pull from anywhere. All right. So since you joined the radio industry, how much has it changed since you first joined? First of, first of all, it's technology. Back then, like what we're doing right now with the microphones on our heads and the recorder, couldn't do that back, you know, when I graduated high school, it was 1998. You didn't really have stuff like this. The internet was still, you know, we were excited if we had a 56K modem. So the idea of podcasting was, we'll say in its infancy to be kind. So when I finally got into radio, radio stations were still using reel-to-reel for editing. Some computer technology was coming into play as well. And once it did, it took off. And next thing you know, if you walk around this building at iHeartMedia, you might find one reel-to-reel, and they use it as a coaster. All right, so how challenging is it to get a job in any type of media, in a large media market such as Dallas Fort Worth? In any type of media, it depends on which media. I'll start, for example, with newspapers. That's extremely hard because they've been downsizing for years because the Internet's been killing their business. Um, for TV, I'm not as sure about that. I know the model for TV is you're in college, you put together a tape to become a reporter, anchor, whatever, and then you send that off to the smallest stations you can find, and whichever one hires you, you take it, and they're going to pay you crap money, and you'll be happy. And eventually, after a couple of years, you move up to a different market, and then after a couple of years, move up to a larger market, and so on and so forth. Radio is similar to that. But radio has changed so much. It used to be the same as TV. You'd make a tape, send it to a small station in a small city, and hope they hire you. Then eventually move your way up. Can't really do that anymore because the small stations can't afford to pay people. So what they've started doing is they've started um, bringing in shows, uh, syndicated shows, to help offset their costs. So it's more and more difficult to get a start in that small market and work your way up. For me, I started in the promotions department working part-time. That was how I got my foot in the door. So I started in Dallas. So very interesting. So were there any steps you took in school to get to the promotions department? I met a girl in class who was, it was my first semester of college at UTA, and I noticed on her shirt it said 92.5 KCPS. And I thought, she probably seems like someone I should become friends with. By the end of that first semester, I had a job interview, and uh, I had started radio at the end of that semester. So what do stations like the Eagle look for while they're hiring or choosing applicants for internships? It's difficult for me to answer as far as the company goes, but I know for us, when we've interviewed a couple of interns, Kinsey right now, uh, she's no longer an intern, but she started out as one. She's now paid by the show. And I interviewed her initially just to make sure that, honestly, she wasn't stupid. And what I mean by that is someone that you know could just understand take direction, had a thirst for knowledge, someone that really wanted to be here as opposed to seeming, seeming like they were forced to be here or it was because they had to do it for a class, um, which happens. And previous to that, 
I had interviewed a girl. Actually, I, I didn't even get a chance to interview her because she couldn't find the elevator. So that's when I say, not stupid, be able to find the elevator. Yeah. So what steps would you suggest to students who are looking to apply for a job in radio or to get an internship? First of all, be persistent. Um, look online to see if there is someone specific that you're supposed to email or contact to send any sort of resume or you know, a, you know, a, an email, a letter, contact, whatever the case may be. That's probably the, the best first thing because I'll occasionally get emails from people saying, hey, how do I get a job in sales? Like, why are you emailing me? I don't know anything about that. And to me, I'm kind of a stickler. If you're emailing someone in programming for a sales job, maybe you're, you shouldn't be doing anything with it. But How did you get on the Russ Martin Show? I got on the Russ Martin Show when I was working at 105.3, and so it's the Russ Martin Show, and they needed a call screener. I was the only one on staff at the time. I'd been at the station for, I think, three or four months, and I was the only part-timer at uh, that had any experience doing that at a previous station. So they just said, here, you do it. And I said, okay. You just you just flew from there? Fly is one way to look at it. It was, uh, uh, it was a long time ago, though. I mean, that was 2002. So you flew, you flew slightly over, like, 12 years? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I started out as a call screener. Then eventually the guy who was the news director couldn't read news very well. And kind of Russ got tired of that and decided to have me start doing it. And then when we came over to the Eagle, uh, he basically promoted me, and that was 2010. So you, you've been there for at least, 12, at least 12 years at this point now? Yeah. So I started with Russ in 2002. So, yeah, just over 12 years. And I actually just my uh, working in radio anniversary was this past Friday, uh, 16 years. Nice. So... Speaking of the Russ Martin Show, what has been some of your most memorable moments or funniest moments to you that have happened on the show while you have been there? I don't know if we have enough time. <laughs> there's, been, there's been quite a bit. The first thing that always comes to mind is when that first year on the show, you usually have to go through some type of, you know, um, earn your way type of deal, pay your dues. That's what a lot of people refer to it as. One of the first things they did to me was they shot me with a dookie cannon. Um, that was at the time one of our associate producer, Eddie Boyd, had made what basically looked like a potato gun out of PVC pipe, but instead put in some brown mystery substance into it. Mostly liquid, some clumps of solid, and I really wasn't sure what was in it. But I know it had been fermenting for like two weeks, and when it hit me, it actually left little, uh, like, red spots on my chest and everything, and it smelled awful. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the thing I would never want to go through. <laughs> Trust me, you don't. Um, other than that, though, uh, we've had the opportunity, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, to meet some and talk to, you know, celebrities. You know, I've talked on the phone uh, with Billy Bob Thornton, uh, James Cameron, director of Titanic. Um, Bruce Campbell. Now that's one of our show favorites because we love Army of Darkness, we love Bubba Hotep, so we have the director and the star of those movies on the show, and then on occasionally, on occasion, we get to actually call them and interview them for various things. Um, but honestly, the thing that sticks out the most is being able to go to work every day, something that I enjoy, and in essence, it's hanging out with my friends. All right. So with all those memorable moments. Russ has so many characters that just I always we always laugh at audience or be you guys at the crew. What's been some of your favorite characters that Russ has just created? Oh, probably the all time for me would be uh, Propecia Nikwa. She's the uh, sort of like the black woman voice that Russ does when he does the nine one one calls. So, I know recently noticed that you started making your own characters. What's been some of your favorite characters recently? Uh, I'm pretty sure I know which one you're referring to and. That's gonna be just recently as Luke Bryan. I don't. I seriously. It was just a few weeks ago, and I was sitting in the car, and I heard a spot come on our station with Luke Bryan, and it stuck out because we're not a country station. So why are we playing Luke Bryan? And then I realized after having a couple of cocktails one night and hearing the ad on our station, I said, "Man, I can sound like that," and it just kind of took off. It. 
it just sounds, that's like, I always laugh whenever I just hear that Luke Bride voices start playing in my ears. I like, appreciate it. It's been fun to do because it's, I think for the most part, it's kind of unexpected out of me because I play the straight man to Russ is crazy. So to hear me kind of go off on that a little bit is, is fun to do. And it's also different for listeners to hear. So if you were able to have your own radio station, say Dan O'Malley FM, what would you play on it? That's a good question. At this point now, I'm wishing I'd looked at your uh, questions ahead of time on that one. Um, it would probably be something similar to what the format of the station was uh, on 105.3 before it changed format to sports. The whole idea of that station was morning shows all day. And part of the reason why is because there's so much competition for music. Now, KISS FM still does great. They're still number one in the market, and they're not exactly worried about what Pandora or Spotify are doing. They are, but they're still doing great. Me, I see it as anyone at any time, if they want to hear a song, they can find it, whether it's through their phone, their car. When I say their car, I don't mean I don't just mean radio. I mean, you got satellite radio as well. So to me, the idea of having compelling, creative, funny uh, talk radio will be forever. So, well, thank you, Dan, for, for your time to do this interview with me. Uh, you can listen to Dan on the Russ Martin Show, afternoons on 97.1 The Eagle. You can also check out The Eagle at KEGL.com. Thanks for the plug, Ty. No problem. For more interviews and other Wolverine radio content, check out the W at WakelandAccess.com. Again, thank you, Dan, and thank you for listening. I'm Ty for Wolverine Radio.